Eschatology Rant by Rudy Rucker. So what's the point? That add up to something, shouldn't it? My life, even after I write it all out, it doesn't really come to anything. Well, I guess I would have been glad to read a life like mine. Glad to see the footprints and the sounds of time. Yes, glad to know there was once someone vaguely like me. And will be again, no doubt. We are a hive, us humans. No individual death really matters. Like when we were at the beach last year and my son Conrad caught a lot of crabs. Crabs are so stupid that all you do is lower a fish head or chicken neck down in the water and the crab grabs it and won't let go. And you pull up the string and net him and put him in a bucket with the other crabs you caught unless you haven't caught any crabs yet, in which case the bucket is empty. And we cooked them for supper. They screamed when I threw them into the boiling water, but screamed so high that it was hard to hear, but not quite so high a scream as lobsters do. We cooked the crabs for supper, and poor Conrad started crying because, you understand, these crabs and him had been out on the dock for several hours doing a number together, biped, catching crustacean. And now the poor crabs were dead, but the consoling factor was that, after all, there was still a whole lot more crabs in the ocean. The race of the crab, not one whit diminished by these individual deaths. No man is an island. It means that, in fact, an individual death doesn't matter. It's the whole thing the gestalt that matters, so that it has been suggested our best way for space colonization would be to send out probes full of bacteria or viruses just so they have that buddy-buddy double strand of DNA as the genes. If you think about it, the genes are sitting down deep in us. We are, in fact, big space probes for the genes. We are robots that the genes built to reproduce themselves. That's one kind of immortality, genetic immortality. The only other form of immortality being software maintenance, one's life and art. But the final hit is that even immortality is relative. Try like 10 to the 30th years from now, man, when most of the protons have broke down, or 10 to the 100th years away, or really if you get down, what the fuck difference would it make if the world lasted forever? Would it matter if you yourself didn't have to die? Oh, it would get too old. Oh. But still, something in one's soul does kind of leap up at the thought of immortality. But it's a con. We have to learn not to fall for it, not get sucked in, because mortality is an essential part of the human condition. And the angels are looking down, all unaware of the dark beauty of the death sentence we labor under. The dark beauty. Take me now, Jesus. Whoa, well, nah, give me 35 more years. I want to be 72 when I croak. 72 inches is 6 feet, 6, 12, 6, 12 sixes, a year of 6-year months. Teenagers are spring and old folks are autumn. Get out the calculator here. I'm 37, so I'm at July 5th in my year of life, though today is the 8th. Up here in real time, real time, real time. Oh! And it's not real in print anymore, my time or me. It's ripped back from me by the current, the flow. I'm going to die. Oh, so what? Who cares? It'll be a relief for sure, for sure. Though there's no rush, is there? But still, as I thought once, death is the only thing that makes life bearable. I mean, how awful it would be to stand forever on a cloud with a stiff white heart on, strumming it, listening to hymns, nasty God walking past to piss on the floor, a chance of a peek up the blue sky folds of Mary's underwearless skirt at her silken flaxen snatch, more wider than a harp of gold. Strum it, Jesus, I'm a desperate man, but why bother to be desperate? Why do anything when you can groove? The grooving gets so boring. Well, not boring, really. It's the hangovers and the stone over disassociation that's hard to take year after year. The song I wrote to sing with the dead pigs in 82. And do your folks say you're a stranger? Do your friends think you'd be too weird? It's hard to learn to live with so much danger, baby, year after year. Psycho rant, stiff-legged dead pig acts across the stage, making everyone feel better. They aren't up there scraping it round, right down to the rind. What's the point? What's the fucking point, man? Why are you alive? Why is there something instead of nothing? What's the answer? The answer is experienced as the vanishing of the questions. Right, I can dig it. But hey, the questions come back, don't they? You have to come down and make some money, baby. The questions come back later you get the 
answer, fine, you fall asleep, you lose it, lose it totally, and then wake up scratching your head, showering lice eggs across the schizo scenario, and wondering why be working so hard just to get a stiff dick, soft, get a stomach full, horrible animal functions, the way that if you really have to take a shit, you can't think of anything else. Just kind of crab scuttle around to the limbo under the pay toilet door. Find a guy in there stroking his meat on a hard TV magazine. Flub gubba geep. Limbo on outside and lay your load upon the road when toilets weren't invented. All this hassle to keep the system at maintenance level. Putting bug spray on your pussy, should you have one. Ah, to sit on a pussy all day, yabba. All the work to keep your pussy slick and your butt clean and your fillings in, your socks up, your hair down, your wounds disinfected and bandaged, your eyesight corrected, your hearing amplified, your behavior modified, reformed alcoholic, re radio evangelist, Republican congressman, yes, your fungus damp, your itch scratched, and then the piece of food picked out between those two dancing molars. The brain amused with TV, paper, book, magazine, drugs, cigarette, booze, coffee, Frisco, speedball, organ music piped in from the catacombs of Toth. Deluxe all-girl piss fest in Columbus, Ohio. The frisión, my dear. Give us this day our daily rush on the nod as thou art in heaven. In heaven, old man. We are in heaven for sure, for sure. Only the joke where the guys are neck deep in shit and in hell, right? And all day long, they reach up in the air, and there appears another cup of coffee, which they sip, talking things over. Well, I butt-fucked a nun. <laughs> That's nothing, man. I pursued enlightenment. Right. So they're neck deep in a fairly liquid type of shit. And one says, well, this ain't too bad. And the others say, wait till the devil comes by in his motorboat. But still, they've got the coffee and interesting folks to talk to. Point being, maybe that it'd be better to be in hell and limp than forever in heaven with your tremendous, aching, stiff, golden erection for guys, or glowing, gold, lonely, cum-twitch halo for gals, a door for each, with God's horrible bunion feet the size of mountains, and you're in fact standing on them, though you don't realize why there is something instead of nothing, just singing and feeling the better for it, soothing the itch, the fly, the egg, the lurking scream, the Otogen of the species, the way Brits are always supposed to say D instead of R, the Gadate Pyadamids with the accent on the dam. Those guys thought they had something going, one would imagine. Those Egyptians mounting up those rocks and sand and shit. Chariots of the gods? Nah, the power of the weak. What man can do? My artist friend Tuskman used to yell at me. What man can do is uh, turn other men on? Take this body which is given for you. Do you think I'll go to hell for talking this way? Oh, what's the point? Can somebody tell me, please? Not that I'd listen. I've got it all figured out, I tell you. I know the answer, and it's... Sometimes I feel so happy. Sometimes I feel so blue. I mean, surf it, bro. Hang ten. Ho, dad. Slide in and out of the reckless wash of snit-snit bubbles. Each a galaxy in itself. And what can we ever know of the fish who swim below? Just be there. Why? Why? Just do this, do that. Keep in mind that if enough people believe anything, it's probably wrong. Eternally subject to revision. The idea in history, though each time you figure it out, you still have to go to sleep and again wake up and again start over. A day is such a very long time. Why would anyone, why would anyone want to live forever? Throb. The muse pissing on his face and throb. He's up again, out of bed, around the bend again, over and over until if you're John Lennon, some mushrooms from West Yashit blows you away. Or if you're Aldous Huxley, your wife shoots you up with acid. Meanwhile, JFK's croaking on TV in the nurse's room, and your old lady's like shooting you up every time your stroke twitched, big wise, forever talking mouth tries to move. Uh, uh, uh. Yes, dear. Take another hit of chemicals and fucking die, man, and shut up. She spikes you again. Into the light now, darling. Into the light. Go now. Go peacefully into the light.